In this video, I'm going to try to prevent this from happening again. So stick with me and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So as you can tell from the intro, my old Arctic Cat has been eating recoils. It's been doing that ever since I got it. Um, reading around on forums, I've heard that a lot of people have the same issue with the uh, big bore, two-cylinder Arctic Cats. Um, so the way I understand it is, they've used this same recoil on all kinds of sleds from the mid-90s on up into the 2000s. Now once we got into the big bore two-cylinders, the 800s and the 900s that have high compression, these recoils just don't quite hold up. I mean, as you can see, here's one that I've used in the past, and that inside gets wallowed out there, and it's no good. Um, the one that's in there right now started doing the same thing, but I actually snapped a pull cord on a really cold morning riding last weekend. So there's a fix for that. Um, around 2006, Arctic Cat started making different sleds with bigger heavier duty recoils. So, you can adapt the old Arctic Cat to the new style recoil, which looks like this. You can see it's bigger in diameter, um, so that way it doesn't you know, pull so hard on the cord, it pulls the motor over easier. So, um, what I'm gonna show you how to do is make an adapter for that. Um, first things first though, I gotta get my old recoil out of this sled. So I'll set you up on the tripod and just show you how to do it in case you haven't done it before. For those of you that haven't seen what, I've, what I have here, so this is a 2002 Arctic Cat ZR800 Cross Country Edition. So we've got an 800cc twin cylinder two-stroke here, obviously. Uh, makes about 140 horsepower, and both cylinders right now have about 140 PSI compression. So it's a pretty healthy motor. So uh, we got to get get uh, get down to where that recoil is. So basically what I have to do is uh, take off our exhaust up here. And then get down there and unbolt the recoil. So swing you over here. I've got, you can see I'm actually missing a spring there. I'll have to replace. We've got one spring over here I gotta take off. We've got three over here, and then this uh, spring in the middle here. So um, that'll get us down to the exhaust level or to the uh, recoil level. So I'll uh, show you how to struggle through that. So um, take off the exhaust springs. I like to use a tool like this, a little pick. You can get these these uh, sets of these uh, for all over the place. I got mine in Harbor Freight, but you can get them all over the place. But it's real easy to grab onto that exhaust spring and pull back. So, um, get my first one off over here. I know you can't see that, but it's already done. But you will be able to see my other three. So here I can go ahead and grab a hold right here, pull back, boom, that one's loose. Go over here. Oh. Not quite as easy. Here, we'll try the long end. There we go. Popped right off. And we'll go over here and try to get that one off. Yep, we'll go to the long end. All right, off she goes. Now we'll go ahead and take this spring off. <clears throat> really, you just gotta grab a hold of it someplace and give it a good stretch. And it comes right off. Now my exhaust will come right off. Be careful you don't lose your uh, sealing surface right in there on either end. Set that aside. And now we're down to our recoil right here. Um, what you're going to need is a 10 millimeter. I'm going to use my ratchet here. And you just got to try to find where they're at and work your way around. That's three. 
or and lose the five there's five all right our refill comes right off you can see i've got my rope snapped off in there um tell you what we'll go ahead and put this on the bench and take it apart and we'll see why this one's giving us problems here so just uh, hold on one second all right we're over on the bench here so now all we have to do is uh take a half inch socket to get this uh center nut off here okay there we go i'm gonna pull off our little cap here come on okay so you can see this has quite a bit of play in here there's a there's a lot of wear going on now you can buy replacement um parts for this but they get quite expensive by the time you add up all the replacement parts you've paid just about as much for one of these as you would for the entire recoil so um i'm just gonna go ahead and go the route that i went but yeah you can see that's getting pretty pretty wallowed out in there so once that happens um they tend to want to bind up on you when you when you pull the cord all the way out it kind of like binds like this and it doesn't want to recoil in properly so that you fight that as well so um i'm finding it best to just try to replace the whole work. So um, let me get this junk cleared out of the way here and I will show you what we're going to attempt to do. So basically what we need to do is make this adapter plate. Now, I found a fella on the Arctic Chat forums that actually manufactures these and he was nice enough to send me his pattern here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask him if he'd like to be mentioned in this. Um, so I won't mention it, but if, if um, he does wanna be mentioned, I will put it down in the description there on where you can get a hold of him and you could potentially actually buy these off of him. But basically he made this pattern. So how this works is here's our old style recoil. He's got the bolt holes lined up just perfectly in here so that the pattern matches up with the holes that I was using before, right? Okay. So then you take your new bigger better recoil and set it on here and it's got the holes all lined up for him right away too so basically i've got this quarter inch piece of aluminum plate and i'm going to trace out my pattern on here i'm going to cut it out using a jigsaw and i'm going to go ahead and drill my holes on my drill press so um stay tuned and i'll get that all rigged up and show you how i'm going to do that all right, I took the protective uh, wrapping off my piece of aluminum here, and I've got my big recoil laid on there, so I'm just going to trace around the outside to get my outline here. So just give her a little something like so. Have to be careful over here because there's an opening. Whoop. Okay. Over here. Yep. Something like so. There we go. Now I can take my jigsaw and cut that out to get my outer piece. So I'll, uh, not going to show you that. I'll go ahead and, you know, everybody, pretty much everybody knows how to use a jigsaw, but we'll go ahead and cut out our, our big piece here, and then we'll work on getting our stencil for the center. So I'll bring you back when I'm done. All right. We got that cut out. You can see it fits pretty good. I went ahead and I deburred my edges there. They're a little sharp, but yeah, that seems to fit pretty good. Now we have to put our old one in there and figure out where we want our holes to be for that. So I'm going to go ahead and figure that out and I will show you what I came up with. All right, so what I wound up doing was um, setting my new recoil on top of the plate, line it up, pop, uh, pre-punched all my holes where those are supposed to go, and I cut out my pattern here. Um, that was sent to me by that guy and set it on here to find where my center is going to be. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and figure out where my 
circle is going to be to um, cut out the middle here. So according to his uh, measurements here, we've got 72.5 millimeters, which equates to 2.854 inches, um, which as a radius, which equates to 5.708 inches for a diameter. Um, when I measure the inside here, I get about five and a half. So I think I'm just going to split the difference between the two and go about five and five eighths in there. So that's what I'm going to plan to do. So I'll get that drawn out and I'll show you what that looks like. One second. All right, well, here's where we're at. So life would have been really easy if I had a protractor, but I don't have one handy. So you got to work with what you got. And what I got is a marker, some string, and a tape measure. So I measured out my five and five eighths uh, going across there and um, figured out my radius, which was two and three quarter. So I held a, tied my string around a punch here, put it in the middle, and then uh, wrapped the string around the marker. Uh, I measured across and I did get um, my two and three quarter in four places around there and I just went slow. Went all the way around. You can see I jumped off a little bit here, but I was able to get it where I want it to be. Came all the way around. Um, I went ahead here and I drilled a hole so I can get my jigsaw in there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and cut out my middle here. So I will uh, bring you back once that's done. All right, I've got my center hole cut out. Um, not the prettiest cut, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be big enough so that the basket can stick through and the new recoil can engage. So we got plenty of clearance for that. All right, next step is going to be to get my holes lined up for my old recoil so I know where the plate is going to mount on that uh, on my block there. So I've already marked out my holes for the big recoil. Now I need to figure out where this one's going to go. And that has to be darn near perfect because that's going to dictate um, how my new recoil engages with the basket. So I'm going to utilize that template that... Um, that fella sent me online there and get everything lined up and I'll mark out my holes and um, we'll see how that works. So I, I went ahead and I, I punched out all the holes where um, the old and the new recoil sit on this template and then um, I'll go ahead and show you how that looks once I get everything marked out on there. So stay tuned. All right, I've got my holes all marked out. Um, I took my centering punch and I punched where all the holes need to be. Now I'm going to take a quarter inch drill bit, throw it up in my drill press and drill out those holes and then we'll do a test fit and see how everything's lining up. Um, so I'll bring you back once I'm putting it on the machine. Okay y'all, hopefully you can see that there, but um, I've got all five of my bolts in there and everything seemed to bolt up as it should. Now we'll go ahead and pull everything back off and we'll drill out the holes for the big recoil and we'll see how that fits. So I'll drill those out and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. I suppose I should mention that uh, the guy that I got the pattern from recommended that um, drilling and tapping the holes for the large recoil. That way you have studs sticking out rather than messing around with nuts and bolts. So I wound up getting um, some quarter 20 one inch bolts. It's going to be a little bit too long, but better to be too long than not long enough. Then I'm going to drill it out with a number seven drill bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tap that, and I'll show you the results. So stay tuned. All right, I've got all my holes tapped. Got my studs in place there. Now it's time to see if my recoil actually fits over there, see if I messed up or not. Well, look at that. Looks like that's going to work to me. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, back these off and I'm going to put some lock washers behind there and drive that in and then um, put some thread locker on there too just to help sure, help make sure these things stay in place. So um, I'll do that and then we're going to go over to the machine and do a test fit on the machine and make sure everything lines up. So I will show you when I'm going to do that. All right, well, everything seems to fit okay. So that's good. Um, it's snug, but she got in there all right. Mounted up good. Now, the one thing that you're going to notice is that recoil won't engage. So the reason for that is the new recoil is actually shallower 
than the old recoil, so I have to take the basket off and shim it out a bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull my recoil cover off again here um, and unbolt that basket and show you how I'm going to shim it out. So uh, just give me a few minutes and I'll get that all taken back apart. All right, I've got the recoil off and the uh, basket exposed. Now there are three 12 millimeter bolts in there. So all you're gonna need is a ratchet and extension and a uh, 12 millimeter to get that off. So I'm gonna pop that off quick and then uh, we'll go over to the workbench. All right, looking at my old recoil here, I have about a quarter inch difference from where this cog comes out, the top surface of the cog, to the mating surface of the recoil on my old one. So there's a quarter inch difference between this one and where the cob, cog comes out here and meets up here. So that means I should just have to shim out my basket a quarter inch to make up for that. All right, everybody, here's my adapter. I used a hole saw to cut out a three and a half inch hole. Um, then I used um, a step bit to widen up the hole in the middle out to uh, what the hole is when the basket. Um, I then used that step bit to center it to drill out my holes for the basket. So um, I also got longer screw uh, bolts here because I only had like maybe, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch thread sticking out the bottom of um, the basket to go into the um, block there. And I didn't think that was going to be enough. So I got a bolt that was about a quarter inch longer to help uh, make up for that. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt on the basket with the adapter and see how that all looks. So I will uh, bring you guys back in a moment. All right, the basket is officially bolted on. Now it is time to throw on the recoil and see if we actually have engagement. So stay tuned. All right, recoil is bolted on. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, we got some engagement. Ripped it right out of my hand. Well, tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and run my cord up through, put my actual handle on there, and then we'll give it the real test. So uh, stick with me, and I'll show you once I get that done. All right, everybody, we got it all threaded through. New handle put on. Let's give her a few yanks and see what happens. All right, looks good to me. Now I'll get the rest of the sled put back together, and we'll give her a start. All right, sled's back together. Let's see what happens when we fire it up. 